Hello and welcome. Today we'll be taking a look at boat elevators and specifically using pistons to dictate what floor you're going to be stopping on, on in your boat. So first of all I will tell you that it's not really necessary as I usually do because you can literally just get in a boat and just get in other boats along the way while inside that boat so you can literally just use boats for your floors and just get down by using maybe different drop zones for every floor so if you have three floors you could have three different water drop zones that take you down to each floor respectively that way even if you're on floor three you can still get down to floor one instantly etc and that's the cheap way so that if you just have wooden water you can do that but if you have a lot of redstone and pistons I will show you an interesting way to uh, just stop at different floors using pistons. And by the way, you can, if you're, if you have it positioned right, you can just go through one by one holes with that same thing too. So there's a lot of cheap things you can do with that. But oh, and for this, I just placed the boat on a block, two blocks really, and then I just broke the one block, and it stays perfectly on that slightly slight uh, bit there so that you can see the bottom of the boat. But anyway, for the more interesting um, way, here we have a switch system. And now I'm going to remedy the issues with the switch system and this water system here. But just for demonstration, I'm starting with the basics and moving up as I usually do. So we just flip the switches that we want. So if we want to go to floor two, we would just flip the floor 2 switch and you see that floor 2 piston is activated and you turn it off and it's off only problem is that you know you can have multiple opens and multiple pistons open that is and you have to put them all back up whenever you're done with them but it works well enough you get in you move toward the water and because pistons can't suffocate you you don't have to worry about uh, your pistons getting in your head regardless of how you have your boat set up and it'd be best if my boat was set up um, at a different angle than I have here so that it's straight but I was too lazy to fix it but basically you can just get out you know you walk off onto your um, floor and if you have a drop zone you can use that to get back down only problem is if you got back down then this boat would still be floating here and if you pulled the switch the boat would shoot up to the top and that would be a problem I'll remedy that later as well but for now I'm just going to drive away from the water plop down flick off the switch and show you how the redstone is wired basically you just for this very simple example all you have to do is just wire up your redstone to plug into the back of your pistons either by plugging the redstone directly in or by using inverters and of course it's just riddled with problems but it's not too difficult to uh, set up but for the more useful and slightly more advanced version we have a button system to determine where our uh, floors are and if you haven't seen it, I have a video called Pistons Temporary Input Permanent Output and I'm just plugging in that system into what I have here in order to use these buttons and the great thing is that these buttons because it's using buttons and just plugging it into the system you can have as many of these button systems as you want and just plug them into the same place so you can have these on as many floors or any place that you want still plugging into the same system controlling the same pistons but what I have here is I have a reset button, a first floor, and a second floor button. And when I push the second floor button, the piston on the, uh, I mean first floor button, the piston on the first floor opens up. And whenever I press the second floor button, the second floor opens. And the reset button resets them both. So the wiring is just coming from the uh, first and second button and ignore this bit for now or this bit whatever anyway the wire is coming up for the first button going in through this repeater and this repeater is um, basically just here to ensure a delay and I'll mention that later but the buttons just coming up 
and plugging into this save system. Uh, the same save system that I used in the video I mentioned before and it's just saving the value so that whenever it's on that's going to stay on and whenever you uh, flip the reset the reset comes down around through this repeater so that uh, these two don't interfere this is the second floor and you want repeaters wherever you don't want directional interference for example if this because there's a torch up here you know it's just going to come down and power this even though you don't want it powered so make sure you just have these to make sure the uh, direction is only in one way so you don't have power conflicting but anyway the reset is coming down plugging into the back and just whenever the reset is on it's going to turn this side off so whenever we flick the first floor the power comes in, turns this side off, and then this side remains on. So that just happens on every floor. And then the reset just comes around, goes down the back. Where is it? Resets over here, it goes down, around there, plugs in, and up here, and plugs in. Same system on two floors. And then the button two just comes around to the same thing and comes up through this repeater so that it keeps the distance and also delays and just plugs into this area. So what we can do to make the system even better is so that we don't have to press this reset button all we have to do is make sure we have a high delay uh, about maybe one or two higher than your number of floors or whatever and you just have the delay so that this doesn't open until a few milliseconds later and then we also send the same power from that into our resetter that way it resets and then the actual opening is on a delay that way everything gets reset and then only one floor is activated at a time so the power is just coming from the button one the first floor coming down and into here and I just have a repeater to the here so that the power doesn't come around and then activate it it's making sure that the power only goes one way so the power is going in resetting everything and then this is delayed which opens this And you have the same thing on this side for the button 2 here button 2 is coming up going down here through this repeater to make sure that the power only stays in one direction again coming down resetting everything and then the same power is coming up through this high delay to power this piston so that everything is reset and then after everything's been reset we have the activation on a delay that way when we flick first floor we get the first floor and then we get that everything's reset and that opens so if we press the same button again we can see how it works I'm going to do it on this one since it's closer to see so we have that open we flick it it closes and then opens again because everything gets reset and then the one that we wanted is open and then I like to keep the reset button here in case I need to reset the system for whatever reason so that everything's closed so it's great you don't actually have to have one open you can have everything reset if you want but what if our boat gets stuck up there? What if we launched our boat up, died, respawned, whatever, fell down, and then our boat is sitting up there? Well, all we really have to do is just bring the water up so that it's higher. And this should be higher. I just put it here because I was lazy, but if it's higher, it's not going to be a problem. And then we just have to cut off the flow of water. Pretty simple. We just flick the switch and the water cuts off. You can use a lever, but if you wanted this system just for demonstration purposes, I put this here because if you wanted to have this system to where you can shut it off on other floors, any floor you're on, then you just have to hook up the same system where this is saved. Here we have in this square our saves system, and then it's plugging in from these two into the back and the other side so that when we turn this on, this side stays on in the back there and the water is cut off by a piston and then we press the other button the water flows 
and of course as any other thing as I've said with this system you can put as many inputs as you want and it'll still do the same thing if you need a whole bunch all you have to do is make the save system uh, elongated and then just plug in as many as you need and so you know you can just cut off the water when you need and to remedy the situation of it being all uh, wonky whenever you're flying up in the boat and you're sliding around all you have to do is just put the water hidden behind an area like this and the only problem with this system is you can only do it if you're in the southwest the clouds move, move north sun sets in the west stars move some direction that I forgot but once you found the southwest there's plenty of other ways to do it too you just drop the water bucket in the southwest and your boat can interact with that water and actually you can too if I was just not flying I could show you better but I can climb up the water as if it wasn't hidden and then when we get in our boat and move toward the water we just fly up and then you move out of the way and it falls back down and then you can just attach whatever piston system you're happy with and stop on whatever floor you want. So my suggestion would of course be to either use this system here if you're short on resources or if you're like me and have tons of redstone that you left until you discovered pistons you could make something like this. So I would suggest that if you're not low on the resources that is necessary you just use this water system here with this piston system here and make sure you have a shutoff valve so that you can um, drop any boats that get stuck. So that should be about it I believe for this video. See you next time.